Hey there, it's Trizzy and Leah, your hosts for the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. We created this travel podcast for you, who's just as obsessed with exploring the globe as we are. We each travel a different way and even have different work schedules. But every episode, we aim to widen your worldview, inspire you to consider a destination near or far, or learn from others. With us, you can adventure from anywhere. Keep in touch with us on social media at Ticket Number Two Anywhere Podcast. Remember to connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Never miss an episode by subscribing to Ticket Number Two Anywhere Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Pocket Casts. And hit subscribe to follow our visual podcasts on YouTube to keep up to date on our channel. If you find value and enjoy our episodes and special guests, please rate us and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It means the world to us and helps others find us easier. You can also leave comments or reviews on our YouTube channel or Facebook page. Be sure to search for Ticket Number 2 Anywhere Podcast. Take a screenshot of the episode you're currently listening to, share it on your socials, and tag us. Or send this episode to a friend if you think it'll be helpful for them. And if you'd like to support us by monetary means, you can do so by buying us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Ticket number two, anywhere. Hey, it's Leah and Trizzy, your host for the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. We are two voices, two views, and two ways to adventure anywhere. We've been blessed to have such a strong foundation of family and friends to help us become the women we are today. We are travelers, adventurers, producers, podcasters, event managers, content creators, foodies, and even our own comedians. But even to continue to progress and to keep our travel dreams alive, we still need inspiration. Running a travel podcast has given us an opportunity to meet and interview guests all over the world, content creators, travelers, people that inspire us. And these guests, they aren't just guests. They're full of wisdom and experience. They're inspiring to others and our lives at home or abroad. And they are a force to be reckoned with. In this episode, we want to proudly highlight the women that we've had on here and to share a piece of inspiration from them from past episodes. So this is dedicated to them, to all women, and to everyone out there celebrating Women's History Month this month of March. So happy Women's History Month. Now you've done so much and you're still juggling a lot. What is like an active, productive day look like for you? <sighs> okay, so it's, it's challenging because I have a full-time job and I'm a manager. So it's not like I'm only an independent worker. I also manage a team. So, mm. but I think for me, I'm, what's awesome is that I'm really good at my job. So it's like, I can fit my workload in nine to five, even when it's crazy. Mm. So with that being said, I really prioritize early mornings because that's my zone of genius. So everyone has like this productivity time of the day where it's like they're, they're lit and they're ready to go. And mornings just so happen to be that time for me, which means that I need to make sure I prioritize my creative work during that time. So I try to my best as possible. I try to wake up early to get work done for my creative businesses, what I'm doing. And then secondary, like I try not to do it after five because I know that I'm already spent. Mm. Like I woke up early, I worked for the man and now I'm just, or the woman (laughs) and now I'm spent, right? So like I really rarely work after five. Um, It may be like a podcast interview or something like that where it's like less brain power. But I think figuring out the time that you're most productive and hopefully it's not during the day, like, you know, during 12 o'clock when you're (laughs) working or something like that. Um, that's really helpful. Gotcha. I literally just listened to your episode on like how to balance content creation around your nine to five job. <laughs> yes. Cause yes. that's like what both Trizzy and I are doing. That's what you're doing. So you're teaching us how to do that. You know, I'm always mm-hmm. looking for tips on how to be better. That was Danielle Desir, CEO and founder of the thought card. She's now working full time on her babies, the thought card and welcoming her first child. So congrats on both. Making that leap away from a full-time job to focus on your own business, content, or brand can be confusing, scary, and intimidating. But Christine Lozada, a badass drone pilot, content creator, and now podcast host of Badassery Podcast, encourages you to find your purpose as the first step in what you are creating. So I want to ask this question because a lot of people, I mean, pandemic or not, 
Tell us about the prep from that transition from corporate life world to full-time content creator and traveler. Cause that's, you know, for our audience, that's a big, that's a big thing. That's a big deal. Yeah. And that's a really good question. Um, and ultimately what it came down to, and this is a challenge I see with a lot of content creators out there is they're simply making content, but they might not know why. And simply looking for followers and more people to follow you is not a good reason for that. And so even though I don't know yet what the business of being a travel creator is for me, there's lots of different paths. I know at my core, what my purpose is behind that. And that's helping people to live these bigger amplified lives where they feel more alive by doing things like travel. And then my job within that is to help make travelers travel smarter, better, easier with the content that I'm putting out. And when I keep that at the forefront of everything that I do, it makes it really easy to figure out like what I want to be saying, what kind of content I want to be creating, because it's the questions that I asked, you know, before I sat down at my computer looking stuff up before all of my trips. And so I guess in the transition between the corporate world and content creating, the two things I would say is one, be so solid in why you want to do that in the first place. And the other thing is while I do bring some of my marketing skills over from the corporate world and things that I do at the same time, I have spent more time unlearning what I learned in the corporate world Mm -hmm. because who you are in the corporate world and the way you act is oftentimes kind of like a robot and yes. is not really a fun thing for a lot of people to be consuming mm-hmm. on places like Instagram, <laughs> right? Like you want to keep it way more real. You want to be more yourself. You want to be more casual, but you also want to be really helpful. Um, so unlearning the corporate world and then being solid in what type of content I'm creating are like the two things that have really helped me to make that transition from the corporate world to being a content creator. Finding your purpose is always key, whether you're going full-time on your own or balancing a nine-to-five job with the side of content creation. Denise Castaneda has been working full-time and creating travel content on the side as part of her life as an expat in London for the past five years. And I, and I definitely, you know, have to work with a budget <laughs> being a, being a millennial and also living in a very expensive city. It's not yeah, cheap to live in London. So, um, for me to be able to kind of, um, fit that in. And I, and I was pretty lucky before, even before I moved over here, because um, I traveled quite a bit for work. So a lot of times I would, t- I would, if I was anywhere new, I would try to tag in an extra day, ev- just to even explore like a city. So if I went to Chicago for a training, I would tag a, oh, an extra day or two just to explore and see stuff over there. Um, when I was going to Vancouver for work, I, was, I, I actually have a godmother who lives over there. So I stayed with her for a weekend before I had to go up to a random mining site for, for work. So it's just one of those things of like, um, I think kind of that sense of like being a bit savvy on how I, you know, save for miles, use kind of, you know, smartly use credit cards to kind of, and hacking and that to kind of make travel affordable for me allows me then to have a lot more nicer experiences in other areas. So I definitely try to find a balance within that. That's good. Life is all about balance. (laughs) No, that's, that's exactly what people are looking for. You know, they want to compare to others and be like, how am I doing this? How is Denise doing this? You know? Yeah. The destination is also an expat living in China. She taught English in Colombia first, then made her way to Chongqing in China. Although she was hoping to hit up all the countries in Asia with the pandemic, she has only been able to explore and travel within China. If you follow her Instagram and YouTube channel, you'll agree that her domestic travels does not disappoint. Went back to the States and applied for my visa to come to China while I was teaching online. So that took quite some time, um, even before COVID, like getting a Chinese visa was just a very intricate, long, detailed process. So I thought I'd be in the States for three months in between and it turned into eight months. So I taught online during that whole period. And by the time I got to where it was time to come to China, I was making about $2,000 tax-free a month. And I almost stayed because (laughs) (laughs) if I can make this and go back to Colombia, I'm good. Like that's, that's plenty of money to to live well there. So 
I ended up just, um, I already made, did all the paperwork. So got on the plane, came to China in 2018, and I've been here ever since. <laughs> I am in Chongqing, China, which is, is a place a lot of people in the Western world haven't heard about, but it's a city of 30 million people. It's, it's huge. It's a huge city. Wow. 30 million. Yeah. I always see on your Instagram, your Instagram stories are lit all the time, every hour of every day, but you get some good traveling in, in China. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, at first it was a little bit devastating because I had spent every single vacation out of China. Like I just was going everywhere. Like it was my goal when I moved here to like see all of Asia. Like, so any holiday I'm like, I'm out of here. So it was kind of good that I didn't see much of China when this happened because now I'm restricted to only traveling domestically. So mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been fun. It's been interesting. No matter where you are, what you're doing or who you're with, just thank your body for the ability to be there. Doing whatever that you're doing, seeing whatever that you're seeing with whoever you're with or not with. Right, solo travelers? Chantelle, also known as Voyaging Vagabond, encourages us to accept and appreciate our bodies no matter what season or stage of life we're in and no matter where we are in the world. It really comes down to just like having the tenacity and the grit to go against every society standard that has been ingrained in you since the time you were born and like having the ability and the strength to just go against all of that and say, no, I don't want to spend my entire life hating myself because I look a certain way or because I think my arm's too fat or like my waist is too big. Like, oh my God, there's better things to worry about in my opinion. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I think once you have the strength to kind of like overcome this idea that there's always going to be something wrong with you and look at it like, you know, I might not need to love my body, but I just want to accept it. And I just want to mm -hmm. stop speaking terribly to myself internally and saying that like all of these things are awful about me. And I think once you do that, then like anybody can gain confidence in themselves mm -hmm. if you're just willing to love yourself a little bit more. Yes. And I feel like it's, um, it doesn't come or it doesn't happen overnight. It has to be little by little, like start Ooh. with your pinky finger, like pinky finger. You're <laughs> awesome. You do a lot for me or like your thumb because I don't think we can operate without our thumbs very yeah, well, right? We yeah. can't do the same things. We can't pick things up, right? Mm -hmm. So like, sometimes it's like focus on what that body part can do for you. Yeah, I actually, so Annette Richmond, who runs Fat Girls Traveling is a really good mm -hmm. friend of mine. And we worked on a program together a few years ago and we were filming and she had us do this exercise where we took the things that we typically criticize about ourselves and write what we loved about them. So mm -hmm. like, for instance, a lot of plus size women will be self-conscious about their arms. They're scared that their arms are too big and, you know, they'll like shy away in pictures. And she was like, why do I hate my arms? My arms give the best hugs. And like, <laughs> that line still sticks with me to this Aww. day like shout out to Annette like that really like genuinely like, and it's just changing the way that you talk to yourself mm -hmm. changing the way that you criticize and rather than like criticizing being like you know I I instead of saying I hate my stomach why don't you say like I love my stomach for stretching and keeping up with the life that I've been living and, you know, be, I'm thankful for my skin for being able to change and form to whatever I put it through. Mm -hmm. Like your body's such an incredible thing and it sh it's not meant to be hated. It Absolutely. is definitely. It's like, we're able body. It's a privilege for oh, us yeah. to be able to move. Totally. So I feel you on that. Yeah. And I like people that underestimate too. that. Yeah. yeah. With so much talk on self imagery we neglect what's most important, our mental health. Talks of mental health have become a stigma for the longest time. Too long that people feel like the cure to mental health conditions is just to neglect it. But that's not what we're about. So we brought on Mindful Maggie to Ticket to Anywhere, and she's giving us a safe space to talk about mental health on this podcast. All right, last August, one random morning, I just woke up so early and I had this epiphany that um, 
I needed to be open about my mental health issues. I've been posting about my travels on my personal Instagram page for the longest time, but I felt like something was missing. I felt Mm -hmm. like I needed to be more honest with my audience because wow, I have these beautiful travel pictures and everything, but it doesn't show the more realistic side of travel. And unfortunately, I have a chronic obsessive compulsive disorder. And then I found out after I began the blog that I also had social anxiety. So I just like to be open about mental health issues because these are still heavily stigmatized in our society. And yeah, I just like to spread awareness of the stigma. My, uh, my slogan is destigmatizing mental illnesses through travel. And I do that with my stories on the road, as well as practical resources, hopefully to make travel more accessible to people like me who have mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Your mind is your weapon. Self-defense is mental first, then physical as a last resort. We can all benefit from learning the basics of self-defense, especially during our travels. Rebecca Ahn of Tough Cookie Travels is teaching self-defense from a different perspective, a woman's perspective in particular. She saw that it was missing in the marketplace, so she decided to create it herself. So self-defense is as mental as it is physical because um, so much of it is about preparing Uh, the best prevention is preparation. So the more you can be prepared for anything that may happen, and I don't mean that in like a walk around nervous all the time and be scared of anything that might happen, just being really confident of how you would handle, thinking through. It's the same as creating like a disaster preparedness uh, routine or procedure. Just knowing how you would handle yourself in situations makes you more prepared to handle it and also makes it less likely that it'll happen. So there's so much about how you carry yourself, how you pay attention, how you keep yourself calm um, and confident as you walk around. So much of it is internal. So much of it is what happens in here. Uh, When I teach a class, I guess, um, I start with the steps you would take to prepare yourself. And we don't get into the physical fighting until later in the class. Because I take it in order of what the ideal scenario is. Your very first ideal scenario is to get away without any violence happening. I mean, that's self-defense is still self-defense if you don't fight at all. And that's just a huge misconception that people have. And one of the main things that isn't taught, it's just, that's what frustrates me so much about how self-defense is taught. Um, Mm -hmm. It's always taught by men and uh, and focused on the fighting and here's how you kick ass. And then you do this move and then you wrap your leg around you do this complicated, you choke him out. And I'm like, that's not the point. (laughs) <laughs> the point is to get away and what yeah. point do we run away so Wait, were, were you saying like the point of it was to like hold them off long enough so that you can get away yeah if you do have to fight right so you're trying to escape to safety that's your number one goal always mm-hmm. and if you have to fight in order to do so then by all means do so but only up to the point that you can get away and and no further um, and that's right. not just important for your own safety um, and you know, obviously to get to safety and to make sure you're going to be okay. Um, It's also important legally. Um, And the legal side of self-defense is also not talked about in self-defense classes. That's really frustrating as well. So um, one of the four requirements for, at least this is in the U.S., for federal self-defense on a federal level for self-defense to apply in court um, is preclusion. And that means you had no other option. You had no Hmm. other chance to get away. Um, Mm -hmm. So there are Yeah, and that varies state to state. States also have individual rules, um, whether they're a stand your ground state or a duty to retreat state. Duty to retreat means you, if you have the opportunity to retreat, you must. Um, You have Uh a duty to retreat if if at all possible. Stand your ground states mean that you do, it's there's, you get a little bit more leeway there. You you can stand your ground and use lethal force to Uh fight back if you feel threatened, regardless of whether you have a chance to escape. So that's interesting. But they're always, you know, there's fine print. It's not cut and dry. It's not black and white. So in general, it's very, very important to get away as soon as safely possible. We're moving on to traveling sustainably with Christina Robinson of Plastic Me Not. She's advising us to just work with what we got to be a little bit more eco-friendly. 
this is something that we really tell our students now too more so, but really everybody, like you don't have to spend a lot of money to be eco-friendly or to be sustainable. Um, the most sustainable option is using what you already have. And so that's why like reusing is huge. Like, um, you know, this is like to go where I, I bought this at a conference. I was supporting like a nonprofit. I'm happy I bought it, but you could just use a Ziploc bag at home and your own silverware and you have your own to go where, wherever you're traveling. Maybe bamboo is a little bit lighter. It's more convenient than like your silverware, but, um, I just want people, I don't, I don't want people to think they need to spend more money to like be green or like help the earth, you know? Right. Um, and especially for like a lot of the insulated water bottles now, a lot of these are like at the target dollar section or a lot of like volunteer events to give these out for free. Um, for traveling, especially the insulated metal ones would be my favorite. So like a hydro flask or I bought, uh, it was like a two for 20 deal of the Costco brand of hydro yes. flask. And the good thing too is that you can take your hydro flask with you on the plane through TSA as long as there's no liquid in it, um, even as a carry on. So I think that's something some people may be deterred to bring reusables when they're traveling because they don't think that they can bring them on or like, oh, like, but I'm drinking water and I, you know, they're telling me I have to dump it out so I can't. But um, I had an agent tell me what that one time. You can even have it full of ice, it just literally can't be a liquid inside. Oh. So. So that's a good option too, if you want to have your ice in there and then as soon as you're um, on board, you can get water from them and then- Oh, I didn't know that. You could bring ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that. I I didn't know that either. (laughs) He told us that and we were like, okay, noted. (laughs) Interesting. So Christina, do you have, sorry, do you have um, multiple like bamboo utensil sets and multiple straw sets? Like just to rotate them out or- um, no, <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm just wondering. Yeah, I just clean as I go. Okay. So yeah. As soon as I'm done with the meal, I have like a reusable, like a washable handkerchief that I keep too, is like my to-go set. So I'll kind of like, if I'm on the run or like hiking or camping, kind of just wipe off my bamboo mm-hmm. um, utensils and then I'll rinse them off later. This is just like, yeah, my ultimate straw set that just, I just keep them all in here. So I will say though, if you're someone that like, Obviously, practice makes perfect, and it's all about, like, forming that habit, Mm -hmm. Um, but it is useful. I have friends where I think, you know, they'll have a reusable straw in their car, and then, like, at the office, and then one at home, or one in your purse, or one in your backpack, so when I'm switching bags or something, I do have to, like, consciously be like, okay, I need all my reusables, and then I'll, like, go through my list. You won't need a straw for some wine and chisme, though. Cheers to Jessica Yanez for creating a platform for BIPOC to share their stories on her podcast, the Wine and Cheese May podcast. So I'm a wine and cheese lover and chisme is Spanish for gossip. So it's wine and chisme. So it's wine and gossip. But the podcast was really created to share stories of people from the BIPOC community um, because I feel like there's not enough of us. And it's, I kept hearing the same stories over and over and over again. And I was like, you know what? I have friends who've never been on podcasts that they have amazing stories. I have so many people that I know that are out there that I haven't met that probably have really awesome stories and they just don't have a platform. Why do we always have to recycle the same stories over and over and over again? Not to say that I don't want to talk to those people as well, but I just wanted to give a platform for the quote unquote everyday person when you're surrounded by people who have really wonderful stories to tell and inspiring stories to tell. It makes it easier because sometimes you get down on yourself. I'm sure you guys have experienced that. Like, is anybody listening? Does anybody care? Mm -hmm. Does anybody, whatever. And then, (laughs) yeah, right. And then I talk to somebody and I hear these stories and I'm just like, man, if one person is inspired by this, then it's all worth it. Then the work is worth it. Then staying up late to edit is worth it. Cause you know, when you're a small podcast and independent podcast, like we are, Mm -hmm. it's, you know, you're, I'm the host, I'm the producer, I'm the editor, I book the guests, I look for the sponsors, like I do everything just as you guys do. And it's not, you know, we want to think, oh, it's just so easy. But because I love it so much is what makes me keep going. I, when I was traveling, when I drove up the coast, and I was in Napa, and I was editing, I was up till I don't know, 11 o'clock at night editing because there was an episode that needed to be 
you know, drop to me that needed to drop the next morning. And because I love it so much, I don't mind doing it. From one podcast to another, Janine and Martha of the Oh My Travel podcast show stamina after years and years of podcasting and friendship, just like Trizzy and I. You guys are like five seasons in. That's crazy. And you average kind of like 20 episodes per season. So that's 100 episodes if I'm doing my math correctly. (laughs) That is insane. (laughs) So props to you guys. Congrats on that. Um, So what have you guys learned about, you know, sustaining a podcast throughout these five seasons. Um, we, oh my God, we've learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. We've learned how to kind of manage things, I guess. It took us a while to actually get into a routine, I think, with it. We've always had it so that, you know, we're doing new episodes every Tuesday, you know, while the season is, is going. Um, but I mean, other than that, we didn't really have like, who, you know, now we're like planning more. We're like thinking about strategically planning. Who are our guests? Who do we want? Martha will tell me, who who are your dream guests that you would want for this coming season? So a lot more planning, I think. um, Yeah, it's more for work now. I think before it was a very, it was a way for me to just kind of be creative because I wasn't working and I was kind of going crazy just by myself. Um, so I kind of used Janine as like my person to be like, put all my energy like into her. Um, so I'm very happy that she agreed. Um, but even now getting more like, not like that we weren't serious about it before, but um, we were just doing it to do it. Like, and now we have like an active Instagram account that, um, we update, you know, we try to at least, at least when the season's running, because I feel like we didn't get an Instagram until like way later. And then we weren't mm-hmm. posting things consistently, like at all. And it was just kind of like, hey, like we're doing something like really quick. Um, but now it's more like engaging with people and um, promoting and things like that. So that's been very different and hard because that's like a job. Oh, my oh God. yeah. <laughs> like content creation. I'm just like, it sure is we appreciate all our guests that have contributed time into our podcast and all our episodes and just helping this podcast become what it is it has helped me and leah become the woman that we are like i said strong foundation of family friends and inspiration as well this is the ticket to anywhere podcast thank you guys for joining us for another episode and again happy women's history month